we're gonna walk up to Lisa's front porch. <laughs> this is Lisa's house. Hi, she's waiting for us with her glass of tea on her front porch and she's got some cool things she's gonna share with us today. Awesome, I'm so glad you guys are here today and I get to share a little bit of my garden with you. Randy, be careful, there's some lizards there. So <laughs> <laughs> I want you to be surprised. Um, our lesson today is leaf and seed sorting. And so we're gonna talk about some of the differences in plants. We're gonna talk about monocots and dicots. But I wanted to show you first, wow, some of the things I've been doing since I have been home. Have any of you guys been watching lots of movies? I asked that question. We'll see. We got people jumping in and joining us from all over right now. From awesome. West Virginia, from North Carolina. What movies have you got, Lisa, in your collection? Okay, well, here's the movies that I have. I have um, It's a Wonderful Life. I'm gonna just put them down here on the ground. The Blind Side. I've got Rudy. I've got Toy Story 3. And my husband has his favorites. Open Range, White Herb, and then I've got Shark Tail, and I've got a Charlie Brown Christmas, okay? Now, some of the things, you know, our movie collection gets to be a real mess. And one of the ways that we can maybe have a little more organization in our movie drawer is to organize our movies. So if I'm looking at this, how do you guys think would be one of the ways that I could start to organize my movie collection? Any ideas? Here's one thought. These two, I know, are Christmas movies. I can tell that by the cover. So I'm gonna put those two together. That's my Christmas movie pile. Anybody else have another idea maybe how I could group those? Sometimes you don't know till you see the movie or you look inside, right? But there may be some differences on the outside. Heather says by the theme. That's a good idea also. Okay. Someone else says al alphabetically organizing oh, excellent. your space there. That was from Leanne. So we could do that. Um, if we did it by theme, what would be another theme in here? I'm seeing a couple of sports movies. Do you guys agree? There's Rudy and there's The Blind Side. Those are both sports movies, football movies. So that's two more. What about these? Any way maybe we could, we could finish organizing those? Well, you know, we're from Texas. So, my husband is a cowboy, so he likes a lot of Western movies. So, we have quite a bit of those. These, obviously, are Western movies, kind of by the cover of them. So, I'm going to put those together. And then that leaves my animated movies. So, if I organize them either by type or by alphabetizing them, it makes it a whole lot easier when I go to try to find them, right? It's sort of like when you go to the library. There has to be some order to it, okay? Another thing that you might have at your house is you may have to help do this job. This is one of the jobs that's at my house. Is we unpack the dishwasher, or we wash dishes in the sink, and we've got the silverware. We have the silverware drawer, and you have to organize things in the silverware drawer. Well, I've got three different spoons, okay? They're all three spoons, but they look a little bit different. Each one has a different job, okay? And what we do with it may vary depending on the type of spoon it is. So this one is an iced tea spoon. Why? It's really tall, so it's good if I need to stir my tea to use an iced tea spoon because it can go all the way down to the bottom of the glass. Then we have regular spoons, maybe for cereal or for ice cream. And then this I used last night at my house. I made soup and this is a soup spoon. So it's really good to be able to use that, okay? Then you may have different forks, okay? Both are forks, right? Both have these long tines on them, but one are short and one is long. So this is for salads and this is just for a a dinner fork okay so even though they're all silverware we usually organize them based on how we're going to use them so we're going to talk about how in plants 
people who study plants do the same kind of thing. And knowing about how plants are organized will help you if you start to make cuttings or as you were starting to be able to organize and classify plants that you might have in your yard. So I have a few things in my yard I want to share with you today. And we're going to go. Get a little sip of tea. I'm going to get a little sip of tea. I have my pruning shears. And we're going to cut a few things to be able to look at, okay? I'm going to let Randy get where he can see in my garden. Um, I'm going to take a few of these rose leaves, okay? This is one of my favorite roses. It's called Belinda's Dream. It's really pretty. It's kind of finished blooming, but I've got some more that are about to start. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of this one. Do y'all see these really long leaves? This is actually an iris. And it's a real old iris and I don't know what color it's going to be yet when it blooms my friend shared this with me um, we call those pass along plants right it was her grandmother's iris so it's a surprise I think it's either white or purple but we'll see when it comes up so I'm going to take one of those for us to look at here is salvia I'm going to get a little bit of it for us to be able to look at and Randy, if you'll kind of come down this way, we're going to get a couple of other leaves. These are little um, flocks, and they're just coming back. It's a perennial. That's another way we organize plants sometimes is, does it live year after year? Or there are some things that just grow for one season, and that's called an annual. So there are two kind of types of plants that we're going to be talking about, monocots and dicots. The first thing that I want to show you is it's real easy to break down the word. Mono means one, okay? Mono means one. What do you think di means? Two, okay? Cot is kind of a short word for cotyledon, which is the seed leaf, okay? So, monocots have one cotyledon, dicots have two. So, I want to show you, I have two different kinds of seeds here. We could sort them, they look very different. I've got bean seeds and I have corn seed, okay? One of those is a monocot and one of those is a dicot. It's kind of hard to tell when they're hard like that, but I soaked them so that we can look a little closer. So let's do that. So here's our bean seeds. And I started soaking them last night. I soaked them in water. And bean seeds, when you soak them, they break apart into two halves. So what do you think beans are? Do you think they're monocots or dicots? If they can break into two halves, which is what I have, beans are dicots, okay? Let's look at those corn seeds, okay? That corn seed, wow, okay? I can't break it into two pieces like I did with the bean. So corn is an example of a monocot, okay? So monocots have one seed leaf, dicots have two. There are some other interesting things that tell the difference between monocots and dicots, and that's the kind of leaves that they have. So let's look at what I have. If I were sorting these kind of like I did my movies and stuff, some of the leaves look differently. What do y'all notice about the leaves that I gathered? Okay, these are really long and skinny, right? They're long and skinny. These, not so much. Now, Randy, I want you to look really closely at the veins. Do y'all see these little veins in the leaves? That's on my little phlox plant. They kind of go out, right? They're netted. These veins, look, it's like straight lines. Do you guys see those? Okay, so those are monocot leaves. They have parallel lines or veins. And dicots have more netted, okay? 
So I asked you guys to gather some plants to have for today, some leaves. So if you did that, I'd like for you to take a minute and look at the leaves that you gathered. Are any of them long grass-like leaves like this? Do their veins go up and down and they're parallel? Then that means they're a monopod, okay? If they're netted, then that means they're going to be a dicot, okay? So I asked you guys one of our things for today, see if I can get my sample here, is to fold a sheet of paper in half. Where is my sheet of paper? Here we go. My goodness. So, if you have your sheet of construction paper, you can fold it in half lengthwise like I did. And then you can fold it in half again. And then you can fold it in half again. So when you open that up, do you see we have eight little sections, okay? That's a good math activity, right? So if I have half of this right? Then four-fourths is the same as one whole half, right? Okay? Or one whole piece of the paper. So it's a good little fractional thing to do as well. So we want eight equal parts on there. I want you to wrap monocot on one side and dicot on the other. If you have seeds, then I want you to put your seeds in there first, okay? And I'm going to label mine seed. Randy can see me do it. Seed. Seed. And I'm going to put both of my seeds in there. And you can use either glue or you could use tape, whatever you have, to put your seed in there. Okay. Um, and just put a little dab of the glue on there. And we'll put our monocot seed here which was our corn, okay? And then we're gonna put our dicot seed that had two halves over here, which was the bean, okay? So we already looked at the seeds. Now we're looking at the leaves, okay? One fun thing to do is to do a leaf rubbing. And I did some last night I wanted to show you that you can use with your crayon. And I'm going to show you how I did these, but I was going to just let you see a few that I did last night. If you put your paper on top of the leaf and use a crayon to rub over it, you will be able to see the outline of the leaves and also the veins. Do you see on those how clearly the veins showed up? So I'm going to show you. We could do this on our, um, on our page. Sometimes it's hard for the, the veins to show up on your um, construction paper. If it's hard for you to see yours, just know that you could do just plain white paper. So we'll see if that, oh, it shows up pretty good. Do y'all see it? If your construction paper is really dark and it doesn't show up as well, you can always do it on a white sheet of paper like I did and cut it out and just glue that on there, okay? So that's our die cut leaf, and we see the veins that fan out this way. Let's look at our monocot. It has grass-like veins. We're going to put this under, and let's color on it and see. Y'all see it? It's kind of fun to do it. Okay. And then, if we want, we can then go ahead and glue our leaf on here. So, I'm going to put my dicot leaf here and my monocot leaf over here. Here's something else. There's other ways that you can tell monocots and dicots apart. These are just two of the the most common ways, but you can also tell them apart by how many petals they have, which is kind of interesting. I didn't have a lot blooming to show you up close, but this is my day lily, not my day lily, my Easter lily that I had. Okay, I'm going to pull this out 
Easter was several weeks ago. Lisa Nicole point out that fig leaves are really, really good for rubbing. They're oh, just beautiful leaves, the structural leaves, perfect. but it's got some and great really veinage. Big too, and it shows the netted veins. That's a good thought. So what do you think on this on this Easter lily? What do the leaves look like compared to the ones that I collected? Do the veins look like they're long and and parallel, like our monocot? Okay, so a lot of things that have those long parallel veins or grasses and stuff are monocots. So a day lily, I mean an Easter lily is a monocot. Here's the last little bloom that was on it. I want us to count how many petals we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six petals, okay? Um, our JMG team will post um, a link of some things talking about monocots and dicots that are on our webpage. And I would encourage you to look at that because it's got pictures of different monocots and dicots. But one of the things about monocots is their petals are in multiples of three. So just like when you're doing multiplication facts, three, six, nine, twelve, okay, then you know it's a monocot. Dicots are in typically in multiples of four or five, okay? So this is an extra little tip that sometimes you can look at the balloon. Here's another thing. You know, sometimes we don't know by looking on the outside, it may be hard for us to tell. Is it a monocot or a dicot? They look different inside the stem. So this is a piece of a, we'll call it a tree disc, off of a cedar tree. And do you guys see all of those rings? Have you ever, has anybody ever told you you can tell how old a tree is by counting the rings? Okay. Every year, a tree makes a new ring around it. Okay. That's how dicots look on the inside. Monocots don't look like that. Monocots look more, instead of rings, like our dicots have rings like this. The monocots have things like this. And inside of those little bundles is where the water is moved through the plant and where the food moves through the plant. So they look different on the inside as well. So monocots and dicots are just one way that scientists classify plants. You can look at the seed. The seeds are different. Monocots have one seed leaf, dicots have two. You can look at the leaf itself. We, we learned that dicots have the netted veins that come out like this, whereas in contrast, our monocots have parallel leaf veins, okay? We also learned that sometimes we can tell if they have a flower we can count the number of petals, and that'll tell us if it's a monocot or dicot. And then, even though plants look similar on the outside, if you look inside the stem, there's a lot of differences between monocots and dicots. And later on in our Junior Master Gardener class, we're going to learn how to take cuttings of plants and how to start new plants or share plants with others. And sometimes how you propagate and start plants it varies whether it's a monocot or a dicot. So, I hope you guys have had fun today and got to see a little bit of my garden. I'm sorry about the crazy on the front end, but we would love to see your leaf and seed sort page and your leaf rubbings. Don't forget to use our hashtag for this week. It's going to be hashtag JMG leaf and seed sort, okay? Or Hashtag JMG Kids FB Live. I have to think about it, okay? And if you look in the comments, our office, Karen, has been good about posting and reposting those hashtags. So you need some cutting and pasting. We really want to do we really want to do see your kids at work. So as they are collecting their leaves and their seeds and building their charts and doing their rubbings, we'd love for you to post that and a picture of them with their final work that demonstrates those differences, that would be fantastic. And let me tell you, you can do fun things with leaf rubbings. Y'all could do all sorts of art projects with this to be able to show different types of leaves. I also have done this before where we've taken this and put it under like a white t-shirt and you can pound them 
and the imprint of the leaf will be on your shirt so that's kind of a fun thing too or you could even do it with napkins or whatever so kind of a fun way for you to explore and look at the differences in the leaves and the plants that you have in your own backyard so i hope you had fun today don't forget to share your pictures with us and tag us and then remember next week we'll see you on tuesday for another jmg facebook live and if you want to join us for that remember you can also sign up and be a part of the official jmg group and register at jmgkids.us slash fb live there's a way to sign up so you can earn certification but i'll give you a little preview on our tuesday session of next week we are going to be dissecting a live organism on Facebook Live before we share with you the plant parts wrap. So we look forward to seeing you on Tuesday of next week. Oh my gosh, y'all are gonna love the plant parts wrap. It's great and we have a few friends helping us so that'll be fun. <laughs> Hope you guys have a great rest of your week and share your plant knowledge with someone you love. Bye.